All right, welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain SiteWorks training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you if you have advanced measurements on your data collector, how to create your own road section off of the curb and gutter. This asphalt has just been paved, so it's done. But if this was a situation where the as or the concrete was in, the lip of gutter's in, the model doesn't match anymore, they poured it either high or low, you want to resurface it out for your own grade checking options with the data collector or export to a machine, I'm going to show you how to do that. You don't have to have the design on. You can turn the design off if you want. If you don't want to see it so it's not confusing with what you're actually shooting, you go back into your main menu, go to Project Setup, and change the project. You do want to create a new work order. So we're going to call this the uh, new road. We'll call it 4523. So new work order, and I'm not going to have a design because I don't want it to interfere with what I'm doing. You can run the design at the same time so that you can see and compare how the concrete matched to the original design, but honestly, at this point, that doesn't matter. So if you have advanced measurements, what you can do to do this is I have a crown in the middle of the road here. I know that that crown is about a 150, and I don't know exactly how wide this road is. So you can do a couple different things to figure this out. You can go ahead and shoot. A point over here it doesn't matter what you name it if you want to know how wide the road is we'll go ahead and shoot a point and then we're gonna walk over to the other side here and I'm gonna stake that point again so what I'm gonna do is stake that point that I just shot over there and it's gonna tell me how wide it is over here so it's about 24 8 so I'm assuming it should have been about 25 feet wide Right, so we know that uh, 25 will go 12 and a half for my crown. So I'm going to hit menu and measure, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to have to figure out what side is the highest because what advanced measurement is going to do is allow me to shoot one side of the road and project a crown into the middle, uh, but I need to do it from the highest side. So if I look at my elevation right here and I level up, my true elevation is 51, 35, 42. So 3542 is what I'm really worried about. What's my higher side? Straight across, 3541, 43. It's about the same, so it really doesn't matter what side I start on. But looking down in front of me, I believe what I've checked earlier is the left side is a little bit lower. So I am going to offset my center line from this side of the road. So I'm going to go into my roller stuck in the mud. I'm going to go new line. And I'm going to call this the uh, EOP new, meaning it's new concrete EOP. But in here, I do want to make it a brake line because I am going to surface this out when I'm done. So that's the difference between a feature line and a brake line is the brake line is going to create still a northing easting and a line string, northing easting elevation and a line string. But it's also going to give me the blue squares, which are creating surfaces, are going to allow me to make a surface at the end. Brake line, hit accept. But I have a new icon on the screen right here. This is this offset to the right. So you can see a line with two dotted lines to another line. Not that one. If you hit that one, that's right above the one that looks like an arrow with angles. You can see offset line settings. Horizontal offset. I know that I want to go half of that 20, uh, 25. So I'm going to go 12.5. It's asking which offset direction. If I know that I'm going to walk straight in front of me, but I want to offset to the right, you got to change that to that side because it's telling that. Now, the vertical offset is the one where I was telling you you can change it from slope, slope rise and run, degrees, vertical offset, whatever you want. I'm going to leave it on slope, and I'm going to say 1.5 in the positive, and I want it to record that measured line, so I leave that box. So as I do this, it'll make more sense. You can see my icon on the screen. I'm going to center up on the on that um, edge of asphalt right there. I've got tilt compensating on, but we'll just level up close anyways. And I'll shoot that point. Now, as I start walking, you'll see the blue line, which is mine. I'm going to go probably about 10 feet because the curb and gutter doesn't have any highs and lows here. I'm going to shoot another one. So I've got a red line to my right side and the blue line, which is me, is my line stream. So it's projecting one to the right side of me as I go. Now, what you're going to do, though, is you're not going to shoot the other side of the road on the way back as a projection to the middle. You're only going to project to the center line from one side of the road, 
And then the other side, we're just going to do as a break line. And that's because you don't want the two center lines to come together and not match in the middle. So as I get to this box right here, I'm not going to take every single ins and outs because as you use sight works, you'll realize as you go in and out, in and out, and take a whole bunch of shots, it may affect your surface differently. So we're going to kind of average through that. We're going to just go down here a couple more shots. It keeps projecting to my right side. Now that I've got that set right there, you can see the red in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the roller stuck in the mud and I'm going to do EOP new two because it won't do a duplicate and I'm going to go to the other side of the road. But this time I'm not going to project to the middle because I already have a center line set now. So we're going to go ahead and set up on the other side of the road here and we're just going to shoot some shots on the way back. If you can keep your shot straight across from the other ones on the other side, you don't have to be perfect, but you can see those other shots on the side. If you can keep them kind of close or relatively close, if you have that option, it helps out when it does the triangulation, but not a deal breaker. So once again, I'm going to average through the high and low there on that box and not create too many points, or it gets a little out of hand. It gets choppy when you make the surface. We'll take two more shots and then I'll show you how we can surface this model out to project and make a road. Don't worry about the blue and black icons on the screen. They're kind of color generated based on the highs and the lows. You can see the lower I got, they got lighter and lighter blue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit menu and measure to just kind of cancel me out. You can see I've got all these lines right here. So as soon as we've got that shot, I'm going to go into my menu button. And I'm going to go down to data management and I'm going to surfaces design. I'm going to take this line work and I'm going to call it the EOP new road. Now right here where it says line work, do you want it to include line work or do you not? Your choice, but I personally always say yes, I do want to include the line work. I want to be able to see the lines that I made in my surface instead of just a floating surface out there. So I always include that line work. Now, this next question is a little bit challenging if you did not change your work order. Since I created a brand new work order, that's the only thing on my screen. So it's not going to look for anything outside of that. But if I had a work order that had points that I had shot across the job site and everything I just did here, I would need to actually do a outer boundary like it says here and define it to isolate it. But I'm going to just do use outermost points because that's the only thing on my work order. Hit accept. And it actually wrote me a new surface in my project. So now I just go back to my menu, go to project setup, change project. And under my designs, I will have a new design that I just made. EOP, new road. I can go ahead and hit accept. And we can go out and see what it looks like. So... I still see my same work order on the right side right here, but if I walk into the middle of it, now I have cut fill to finish grade. And if I move over my sur surface slicer view, you can see the new triangulation. The reason why I told you guys if you can keep the points together, which you don't have to, whoops, it's a little easier to bring those uh, triangulations across because if I did one that was halfway in between those two, not a deal breaker by any means, but it helps kind of create this uh, situation where the surface shows like that. So now as I roll it and show you, it actually, it's hard to see sometimes until you move in on it, but it has a defined crown to it because the middle line that I shot with that advanced measurement off that left side projected a crown to the middle. So, so if I come in here, I can turn on cross section. So now if I go into cross section, you can see as I stand out in the middle of this road right here, that I've got an actual cross section. If you want to see the slope percentages on that, go into your gear right here and come into design and you can turn on cross section slopes and cross section lines. So in here, now on the main screen, it'll actually give us a percentage. So now that I walk to the middle, 
it had to kind of initialize. You can see that I'm in the middle of the road and you can see that it's got, based on the way that I'm facing, I have to actually be facing straight in line with that project right there. And you can see it's giving me the current cross section. So it came up and came back down. So that is how you create a surface with SiteWorks. Um, and actually you could at this point export this to the machine. Um, that was for another video, but if you go to the main menu here and go down to data management, you can export the machine, which I'll show you the full process. But in this top drop down bar, I want to export the design that I have open and I want to export to either the old GCS 900, which is the CB 460 or Earthworks, which is the newest version. So let's just say that. And then you would throw in a thumb drive and export it. Your job site calibration, project library, everything would go across. It would be the same thing for the old old system also for the CB460s or 450s. So thank you for watching this video from Site Ticketer Mountain on SiteWorks on how to project a crown, crown to the middle and surface it out using advanced measurements.